URC power rankings for round 17, folks. The penultimate round of the regular season. Playoffs and contention for still several clubs, but let's go through how the teams are looking based on their kind of recent form. And uh, you guys can let us know your thoughts. I should say they're a little bit broken with a couple of teams. Uh, with finals on the horizon, playing their B-sides and getting beaten. But hey, that is what it is. Uh, Zebra is in 16th. They will pretty much undoubtedly finish the season. In that bottom spot, they've had one win all season, which has been the last season. So that's at least an improvement. They played... Scarlets, who aren't exactly a team having a fantastic season, but still managed to get beaten. They scored first, I feel like not for the first time, the Zebra boys, but ended up still on the wrong side of that result. So, yeah, they had a win and a draw early on this season, and then it's just been kind of downhill from there. But as I said, better than last year. Uh, the Dragons also had a loss. They played... A Welsh rival in the Ospreys. Uh, they are on, I believe, a four-match losing run, are the Dragons. They started with a couple of penalties, had a 6-0 lead come halftime. But a couple of yellow cards and too many penalties conceded. Uh, saw the kind of result slip away from them. Uh, so they are down one. The Scarlets, I finally got their jersey on. It's been a while, Scarlets, since I've been able to put your kit on. Because your, I think, four-match losing run has been ended with that win uh, over Zebra. They were ahead at halftime thanks to a Gareth Davis intercept and were able to kind of push on in the second half. So one game to go for the Scarlets. They'll be looking to get another win if they can and get maybe one result higher on the power rankings. We will have to wait and see. Uh, the Sharks are one of the teams that I'm looking at for fielding kind of a B-side. They've got the Challenge Cup final coming up. This weekend, so they didn't field their strongest side. Uh, it was a young side. I didn't recognize all the players, that's for sure. And uh, yeah, they got a red card pretty early on, which was uh, going to make kind of a tough job even tougher against Cardiff. So yes, perhaps not surprising that the Sharks lost that one. But as I said, certainly uh, an eye on the Challenge Cup final. I wonder how Sharks fans, how are you going to feel about the season if you actually walk away with some silverware? It's been a pretty dreadful season, but, you know, Challenge Cup final win might make it seem all a little bit, uh, a little bit better. Um, Cardiff haven't been in this row for a while. I feel like they are up on the power rankings one spot with that win over the Sharks. Big losing run for them has been ended. Uh, they had a bonus point by half time, as I said, against the understrength and not 15 man on the field Sharks side. But man, Fords did well. Hala Holo scored a nice try. So man. Uh, nice to see a couple of Welsh sides, three of them were four Welsh sides getting wins this week, you know, it's not that often that we've seen that even if one of the wins was a Welsh side over a Welsh side with the Ospreys beating the Dragons, but hey, uh, Connick, 11th spot, oh, that was a bad game to lose against the Stormers, it ended up being pretty close, but they, in terms of the playoffs, that was a really, really important game that they needed to win at home. The South African teams tend to not travel that well. And Galway, of all places, seems to be one of the hardest places to visit. But uh, yeah, Connacht not able to get it done. They led at halftime uh, through a try through Blade. But um, yes, lost to Benetton, lost to Munster, lost to the Stormers in recent times. They've beaten Zebra and they've beaten the Dragons. So a couple of sides they have managed to beat are certainly at the wrong end of the table. Uh, the Ospreys are in 10th on the power rankings. That is higher uh, than they were last week. That is up one spot. They've taken Connick's spot on the power rankings. They've won two of their last four. So it kind of speaks to middling in terms of their form. Um, they needed a bonus point win. Kind of similar position to Connick with their position on the table. Uh, and they got the bonus point win. So, yeah. Uh, we'll have to see how the results of that final round pan out. But certainly... They got the bonus point when they needed, so, you know, good for them. Uh, Benetton, the top of the Italian sides here in ninth. Another kind of one of those sides in that middle of the table mix coming into the playoffs. Uh, they traveled to Pretoria. They ugh, conceded a lot of points at the start of the game. I believe they had conceded four tries before they even got any points of their own, which is always going to be tough. But, I mean, credit to them to keep fighting. They got a four-try bonus point of their own. So they didn't come away with nothing, but uh, yeah, they, they got pretty well beaten. So they're down one spot. 
They have also only won uh, two of their last four. Another one of those sides in the playoffs hunt is the Lions, who are quite potentially playing the most attractive rugby in the URZ right now. Some of their tries are just unbelievable. They've won three of their last four. They beat Glasgow at home. Glasgow a tough side uh, in the URC this year. Um, yes, yeah, so they're up one spot in the power rankings. I mean, they had a red card just before halftime as well. So they did that with a man down. I mean, guys like Van der Merwe, Makwane, Pretorius, Nohamba, all these guys getting tries, bonus point win. Really, really much needed. I kind of hope the Lions make the playoffs just because they are such a fun team to watch. So... Good times for, for Lions fans who've endured a few tough years, to be fair. Uh, Edinburgh, uh, the power rankings are down. They are down one spot with that home loss to Munster. They've maybe also been a little bit, uh, could you say, guilty? Like they've, they've beaten teams. You can only play the teams that you get drawn against. But the teams they've beaten recently, Scarlets, Cardiff, and Zebra. So not, not teams that are going to make the playoffs. Then they play Munster, who is genuinely pretty high-flying at the moment, at home. And get beaten. It was close. Really could have gone either way. There were a couple of refereeing calls each way, which kind of were a bit perplexing. TMO calls maybe, but um, yeah, they'll they'll just be disappointed at home. Realistically, that the home needs to be a fortress. Uh, I think it generally has been for Edinburgh, but that's one that they will um, be pretty disappointed to lose. Uh, Leinster, goodness gracious me, is this the lowest you've ever been on my power rankings? Do I think Leinster are the sixth best team in the URC? No. But is Leinster's current form in the URC good? No. I believe they've won one of their last four. Admittedly, with an eye on the Champions Cup, it means they've been uh, rotating the squad uh, in some of their matches, and it's cost them a few of those games. Um, you do have to wonder sometimes. I know a lot of Leinster fans have been questioning the thought process behind you know, the rotation that they do. There's obviously benefits to it because some of the youngsters get experience that they wouldn't have gotten. So, you know, as other guys get older and move on to other teams or retire or whatever, get injured, you've got experienced young players who can step up and maybe become that next superstar. But then also, there's something to be said for just winning games, <laughs> winning after winning after winning, and uh, losing a game to Ulster, which was tough. It was a close game as well. Either team could have won that one. But I don't know, it just puts a dampener as you've got this big Champions Cup final coming up. You know, you'd like to get that momentum of getting another win. But I mean, yeah, as I said, rotated squad and uh, and they lost. Can Leinster go through another season? Uh, well, it's another season where they've potentially got a double on the cards and they've also potentially got nothing. So we'll kind of have to wait and see. But um, yeah, they're not top of the log anymore, which means could be traveling for for finals footy at some point, but we'll kind of have to wait and see. Down one on the power rankings anyway, talking too long about them. Uh, Glasgow is another one of the top sides who've had a loss. As I said, they lost to the Lions. Um, they've lost both their games on the South Africa trip now. They scored the first one through row, uh, had some pretty good footballing skills, but as I said, the Lions, despite their red card, scored some pretty wonderful tries. So yeah, they were up 14-8 with an extra man. And managed to not win the game. So they are down three spots. Which is more than I usually like to drop a team. But that's the way the teams came out. So it's probably a little bit unfair. But as I said, uh, two losses on the bounce. And all the other teams above them are on pretty good winning runs. Which is just kind of the way it works. So that includes Ulster. Who's had a tumultuous season, to put it mildly. Off the season stuff. Coaching changes and whatnot. But man, a great crowd at home. Against Leinster. Push their boys over the line. Really kind of morale boosting win. And very important for them in terms of the playoffs. With teams like Benetton, Ospreys, uh, the Lions all kind of there or thereabouts. It just puts them one step ahead. And I think their final game is against Munster away. So yeah, they needed to get points at home against Leinster. Got the job done. I think that's four wins in a row. Clutch kick from Cooney uh, to win it. So that's what I mean about that kind of form and that good vibes, you know. It's, uh, it's It can be kind of priceless. Losing becomes a habit, and so does winning. So, yeah, good on you, Ulster. Uh, the Bulls are here in third, which is also up one spot. Ulster was up three, which is, again, a big jump. Bulls are up one. If I'm not mistaken, in 2024 in the URC, they've won seven of nine. That's a Star Trek character. But they've won seven games from nine played in the URC, which is pretty good. They had a bonus point before Benetton scored. Also pretty good. 
you got guys like Moody, Aaron's uh, Creel, all doing really well. If you want to be a kind of negative Nelly, you would say, man, you can see the too many points. Like, it's all well and good to, to put on as many tries as they did, but I think they'll still have a few question marks defensively. When you think in playoffs, you think in games that are won, arm wrestle battles that are kind of won on defense, you may not be able to get 50, 60 points in a final or a semi-final, quarterfinal, whatever. So, yeah, uh, they beat better Tom, they did it well. But like I said, they won't be happy with the defensive shift. Uh, the Stormers, who've had a kind of up and down year themselves, if I'm not mistaken, they have won five of their last six in the URC, which is among the best records of any of the teams with that win over Connick. Uh, Angelo Davids had a pretty good game. The commentator, for some reason, kept calling him Angelo. And uh, Davids. Davids. I thought it was just Angelo Davids. Yeah, I don't know. That seems to be making a complicated name, a simple name, more complicated if you're like a native English speaker, but I don't know. Is his name Angelo Davids? Second, first try was chalked off, second try was given. Uh, Libok seemed to pull the strings pretty well and kick the goals necessary, which is not always that easy in Galway. So, yeah, Stormers. Not always that convincing the last couple of games. like They've not been blowing teams off the park, but good away wins in Europe, which is not always that easy uh, for the traveling sides. And then Munster... Uh, with that win up in Edinburgh, I mean, their winning run just goes on, doesn't it? If I'm not mistaken, I keep saying that. I do check these things, but I'm, I'm not infallible. Um, eight in a row in the URC. It's a bloody good effort. Like, talk about peaking at the right time. Munster will fear nobody uh, at this point. You know what I mean? They'll, they'll back themselves to get the job done. Uh, Crowley's been playing bloody well. So, yeah, really, really pleasing to see. We will see what happens as we get into the business end. Still one regular season round to go. And then, um, yeah, it all gets very tasty. But yeah, playoff run still uh, in play for a few of those sides. And then the other side's jockeying for position to see how high they can get. A few of the bottom teams kind of playing uh, for a bit of pride. But anyway, you guys let us know your thoughts. How do you reckon the teams are going for form? Oh, by the way, if you're in the States and want to watch URC... Champions Cup Final, Challenge Cup Final, or Super Rugby, Flow Rugby, down in the description. Uh, that's if you're in the States. They are the official broadcaster of all those comps, and so now's a good time uh, to be getting on board there and affiliate the channel. So there's heaps of kind of finals rugby coming up. But anyway, you guys let us know your thoughts, and I'll talk to you guys again soon. See you later.